Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. We all know that comparing scores in sports is a fool's game. Well, if Team A beats Team B and Team B t- beats Team C, then Team A will beat Team and eh, It's bullshit, all right? I've always said that if you want to find out the truth in sports, you got to look closer. I went into LSU McNeese game Saturday saying, okay, look, all I want to see is LSU fix the non-talent issues. I discipline on defense. Uh, the play calling on offense, get the ball out quicker, more diverse runs, jet sweeps, swing passes, roll the quarterback outside the pocket because, you know, the offensive line. And guess what? LSU did all those things. And it still didn't make me feel any better. Because for the first seven or eight run plays for LSU's offense, LSU could not get a push against McNeese State. LSU could not pass block McNeese State. I found this out today. West Florida, the opponent that McNeese State played previous to LSU, put up 42 points. I could give a damn about the points. What I found out that was interesting was West Florida, their offense gave up zero sacks and zero quarterback hurries to McNeese State. LSU gave up three sacks and a multitude of quarterback hurries. There is no scheme to fix that. The, well, LSU's backup offensive linemen were playing. That's an excuse. And yeah, the defense did, they did make improvements. They, they had better eye discipline. They had better alignment. But look closer. What was the problem last year with the defense? And what was the problem last week or two weeks ago against UCLA? Big plays and crossing routes. LSU kept on giving up big play, big play, big play, and they had trouble defending crossing routes. Well, you know what the three biggest plays were Saturday night in Death Valley against McNeese? There were a 42-yard pass, 32-yard rush, and a 30-yard rush. But the thing is is that all of those plays, the three biggest plays of the game, belong to McNeese. That's per Brian Holland of NBC 33 in Baton Rouge. All of them belong to McNeese. Yeah, but you held them to seven points, right? Look closer. You're still giving up some big plays, the biggest plays of the game. And if you look at the Central Michigan uh, game from two weeks ago, a Central Michigan team that is coached by Jim McElwain, the shark humper, the shark molester, they were down by three in the fourth at Missouri two weeks ago, and they ended up losing by ten to Missouri. Missouri pulled away at the end. Now, why did Missouri pull away? Well... They ran the ball, something that LSU cannot do. And even if the, well, you know, LSU was playing backup offensive linemen, even if that were a valid excuse, and it's not, but let's say it it is. Ed Ogeron earlier today at his press conference said, left tackle Cam Wire is out, and right tackle Austin Deculus is a maybe we don't know. So even if Austin Deculus does play, your left tackle's out, your right tackle is going to be at half speed, and maybe you will be out with your two starting tackles against Central Michigan. Now I went back this weekend, and I watched the game for Central Michigan and Missouri, and I watched Central Michigan's offense. And you know how Central Michigan consistently moved the ball all game long against Missouri? Crossing routes, running back fades, and sending guys in shifts in motion. The one thing that LSU's defense could not stop consistently last year or the past two weeks. And the biggest deal of it all is that the shark molester, Jim McElwain, was out due to COVID issues for that game. He won't be for Tiger Stadium this Saturday. I told y'all to look closer at LSU, but I don't think you need a magnifying glass to see the patterns. LSU cannot run the ball against McNeese State or UCLA, then how is it that in one week they're going to fix that and run against Central Michigan? If they can't pass block against McNeese and UCLA, how are they going to automatically pass block without their starting tackles against Central Michigan? If they can't defend the shifts and the motions and the crossing routes consistently against McNeese and UCLA, then how are they going to do that against Central Michigan? The Vegas line has LSU as a 22-point favorite to open yesterday. 24 hours later, it's down to 19.5. I expect that to go down to 14 by the end of the week. Now, I was watching the LSU-McNeese game uh, on Facebook Live before they ran out of the tunnel, and I was seeing LSU's bad body language. They weren't excited. 
They weren't excited for, you know, coming out for the first time in a full Tiger Stadium in two years. And they weren't pumped up. They had bad body language at practice on Wednesday during the media viewing portion of the practice where they were doing warm-ups and Coach Joe had to cuss them out and restart the practice because they didn't have energy. Because they didn't have enough energy or motivation to practice better after getting their ass handed to them by UCLA on national television. So they couldn't get motivated for UCLA, but they're going to fix that in one week to get motivated for Central Michigan. A team that has guys out for the season for being academically ineligible? A coaching staff that has a picture of Joe Brady on the sidelines for the offense's call sheet? If that's not a metaphor for A, a team that doesn't care, and B, a coaching staff with a team that has no confidence, you don't have to look that closely. The monster is staring you right in the face. The patterns are right there. You don't have to look that closely. Because the only way LSU wins the Central Michigan game is if the players start giving a shit, which they haven't, and the coaches start calling plays with more confidence, which they clearly do not have, at least not yet. Now, let me say this. On a larger issue, specifically with the offensive line, I said this after the Super Bowl against Tampa Bay and the Chiefs, is that football has changed so much, yet changed so little at the exact same time. At the end of the day, you have to be able to stop the run and run the football. If you can't do that, you're probably still not going to win. Football Scoop showed a stat earlier this week. Teams that run the ball and stop the run better than their opponent still win 83% of the time. It's such a cliche, but it's still true. Now, when it concerns LSU's offensive line, and specifically their offensive line coach, Brad Davis, I'm going to reserve judgment on Brad Davis. One, he's an offensive line coach that came in late with an offensive line that wasn't very good or talented, an offensive line that had injuries in fall camp, and on top of all of that, the offensive linemen that were recruited on LSU's campus currently were recruited by James Craig, signed on for James Craig, and they liked James Craig, even though he was fired for his on-the-field and off-the-field performances. James Craig was well-liked by his players. And the personality difference between James Craig and Brad Davis is huge. James Craig is more laid back. Brad Davis is more of a drill sergeant. It's not necessarily a bad reason. It's just different. And also, those players are getting used to that. And I gave you patterns earlier about LSU's behavior. Well, the pattern for a coach is, all for me, the rule of thumb is always this. They don't become stupid overnight. Brad Davis did not become a bad uh, offensive line coach overnight. He just inherited a bad situation because if you look at what, everything that he's done previous to LSU, none of this makes sense. All the other things, to, at least to me, make sense. The problem that LSU has now with the offensive line is that this is the amalgamation of years of bad offensive line recruitment and development by James Craig, and Brad Davis is getting the runt of the litter. It's okay if you miss on one offensive line recruit per year, okay? Missing on any recruit per year or misevaluating a recruit any year, that's normal. That happens in every recruiting class, at almost every position, every level of football. But the problem that LSU's having, what's not excusable, is that you've missed on several offensive linemen, talented offensive linemen, that were recruited by multiple big-time schools through multiple classes year after year after year. That's the problem, and as good of an offensive line coach as Brad Davis may be, the biggest issue is that you can't fix most of those problems in the middle of the season. You got what you got. The only thing you might be able to fix is pass protection issues as the season goes along, simply because that deals with protection, that deals with communication, rhythm, timing. All of those things can be fixed in season. Run blocking? You don't do much hitting in the middle of the season at practice. When it comes to running the ball, guess what? LSU, you got what you got. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description link below.